Facebook, as I mentioned earlier, is another indispensable thing. Um, this video that I have there, a dollar a piece, you can put these on your cable access station. Uh, you have, you, you can, uh, if you belong, start a YouTube channel and put this stuff up on your YouTube channel and get it out electronically. Um, how about letters to the editor? What about going to your town halls? Whether they belong to ICLA or not, it doesn't matter. They're probably somehow involved with Agenda 21. Why not calling your state legislators? We have a website, jbs.org, and if you go to the website, there'll be a, 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 a menu for uh, campaigns. You click that, it will say Agenda 21. You click that, you can send emails to elected officials within a matter of seconds. Now, emails are probably the least effective way to communicate, but it's something. At least they're knowing that, hey, there's a hornet's nest being stirred. So they get an email, then they get a call, and then they get a visit, and they get something like uh, one of these articles on their doorstep, you see. And then there's a presentation in their hometown on Agenda 21. Oh, yeah. So and do a little research, too. Do a little investigation. I was in Nashua, New Hampshire last week, another ICLEI town, only four in New Hampshire, and we're doing a presentation in two of the towns. We did one um, in one of the towns a few weeks ago. I went to the city hall. The mayor said to one of our members, and she knows her personally, she's friendly with her, the mayor said, I've never heard of ICLEI, I don't know what Agenda 21 is. And she probably meant it, she probably. So I went to the city hall, I didn't see any big checks, I didn't see any outward evidence except uh, a little billboard with kids Saving the planet with little, you know, little coloring and what have you. Um, so I went to the radio station where they're going to interview us on, on the subject. They didn't know anything about Agenda 20 either. Amazing little AM, AM station had been there for many, many years. So I took a walk on Main Street and they found a storefront called Renaissance Downtowns. You can't really see it from here. And I looked in the window and they had, you know, big displays, pictures. I said, "What's this?" So I went in. Nice young lady, and I said, "Oh." I saw a banner like this that said, what is smart growth? I said, ha-ha, I found it. <laughs> and I, I said, I have my camera with me. And I said, can I take a few pictures? Oh, sure. I'm taking all the evidence I'm getting. I said, do you have any information about res uh, Renaissance downtowns? And she said, oh, yes. And I asked her if she ever heard of Agenda 21. She's never heard of Agenda 21. Renaissance downtowns is in your state, folks. They're a Long Island-based group. They're a, const a firm that builds these stack and the pack and housing. They get, they get state money, they get federal money, and they get local money to do this. And this lady was so pleasant and so nice, and there's sustainable communities, and they even have a term for uh, Bristol, Connecticut, right? Bristol, and uh, that's the tool city, right? And uh, many other parts of Connecticut where they're coming in. They make a lot of money on this, folks, but so it be in your town. You may not be able to stop the project that's happening now, but you might be able to stop future projects. You know, there was a big project to be in West, Westwood, Massachusetts a few years ago, right by a commuter rail station. They love to do those right by the commuter rail stations, right? So you don't have to drive too far. have to go too far to get your unemployment. To get on the government-controlled rail, to get your unemployment check, or your government check, your Section 8 housing check, or whatever. So, uh, um, folks, we have a serious problem, but we think we can win this. We have a lot more people, once they understand it, that will be on our side. You know, a lot of Tea Party groups just a couple of years ago weren't even touching this. Now it's a major issue. The 912 groups are all talking about this, and we have to start making this, you know, put this up here. It might be here, it should be up here on our agenda. So and I'm available to give this presentation like this. Uh, and you know what, you don't need anybody coming in. You get a video, and you get some extra reprints, and you have shoe leather, you know, to go to your town halls, your city halls. You can make a phone call pretty quickly, and we can win this, folks. And, you know, I look at my son, he's 14. I've got five children, and I say this, and I mean this in all sincerity. I say that um, his generation will be the ones that will get us back under our Constitution, because we're not ready for it. Let's face it, we're not ready for it right now. That's why certain people can't get elected, you know, because they're not, we're not ready for it. But we will be ready for it. And our job is to prepare this generation to get us back under the Constitution. And what's the alternative? That he will be a hated and despised minority in the nation of his founding, right? So when I say minority, I don't mean pigmentation, I mean ideology. That's what I mean by that. No, so, I just wanted to bring up something, because I think it's a very important component of Agenda 21. I was listening to Republic Broadcast Network last week, okay. and this woman, Vicki, who's an expert on yep. Agenda 21, brought up the free trade zones, and I did watch, before my IT scan, I watched the Hawaii governor, Hawaii our governor, with the National Council of Governors, yep. ushering the Chinese, and they're going to be part of the Agenda 21 plan is to allow for these Chinese, uh, that's, right. To come in that's right. That's right, yeah. So, 
there's so many other aspects. I, I could, you know, we could speak up here for all day long, you know, for the next five hours, but I think most of us have jobs to go to. to, to so I want to thank you all for coming, and I thank the Oath Keepers and uh, Connecticut Patriots and all of you folks that participated. And I do, again, urge you to get this reprint, this DVD. And also, I have a, you know, if we don't know what type of government we have, we can easily accept the wrong type, right? We're a republic. The average person doesn't know that. Well, I've got a great little essay written by Robert Welch back in a uh, speech he made in 1962, Republicans and Democracies. This should be a Tea Party and Oath Keeper state like Every Oath Keeper group should have some of these at their table because a lot of folks don't know the difference. But more and more people do. So we just have to keep it up, and God bless you, and thank you. Cool. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to say, to add to what Hal said, as uh, another part of your activism, uh, I know you have uh, street fairs and county fairs and things like that. Well, down in New Jersey, New York, and even Connecticut this year, we worked 72 information tables where we set up a table like this, pretty much just with reprints, not the books because you can't really sell them there, but we had our banners, or three or four banners, we had teams out every weekend, sometimes nine teams in one weekend out, and just talking to the people in the town. Ask your town, your people in the town to, to go to the town hall and see if you're on Agenda 21. And we stressed that this isn't conservative versus liberal or anything, this is Americanism versus globalism. This is your freedom. And we've been doing street fairs for a number of years on different issues like illegal immigration and the Fed. I have to say for a topic that hardly anybody knows about, we had such a great response from people because it's their town. It's your country. And, and it made people understand more. And as a result, we sold more material this year uh, close to $16,000 worth of stuff. When you consider these are 25 cents a piece for most of the reprints, we hand out a lot of material to a lot of people who may not understand it yet, but the more they hear about Agenda 21 and sustainable development, they may go back and read the stuff they picked up. I just got a call this morning from a guy who met us in June at a street fair who wants to now get involved because he finally sat down and read it. So there's a lot of things to do. You don't have to take a bus ride to Washington or to your state capital even. Work your town, work your neighbors, your friends, and your family, and we can get this job done. This is something we have to win. We absolutely have to win. All right, well, thank you so much. Well, I warned you. You're going to be uncomfortable. Something Hal didn't know about. John sent him the link on the article, and this was from the 16th. Florida repeals United Nations Agenda Law 21 with their new Republican governor on it. So Florida's another state that they've gone down the hill with. Uh, Oath Keepers has a program. I think it's going to blow up. I don't know. Now, Oath Keepers has a program called Awaken the Sleeping Giant. And that's basically, it's about the veterans, being able to awaken the veterans and start to assist on, again, your own personal family, your neighborhood, your community, your town, your state, and build that up. Folks, we are the sleeping giant right now. We are the people. You are no longer free to ignore something like this. You sat here amongst us, you sat next to me, you sat next to Stan and Robin and Kip and Judy and everybody and listened to this. You know about it. You can no longer go to sleep. There are things you have to do.